Several young couples were at the Priory. One day, as we were waiting for coffee in the salon, one of the newly married young women beckoned to her spouse and pointed to the empty seat beside her in no uncertain manner. And he, being the perfect American husband, immediately got up and sat beside her. Gurdjieff gave, not her, but him, a dirty look, and after a pause began to say that a man must not be a slave to a woman. He also spoke about the low status of American women compared with that in older countries, because the men had relinquished their responsibility. He added, If you are first, your wife is second, but if your wife is first, you must be zero. Only then will your hens be safe. He then asked for some papers to be brought in and told someone to read the following. The Greek sage Socrates was a follower of this method, the method that Gurdjieff taught, and in order to obtain shocks for evoking an intense manifestation of his inner struggle, he even looked for a corresponding wife, and having married her, he compelled himself to endure externally, patiently, for the rest of his life, the constant scolding and nagging of his Santipi. Some say that Gurdjieff often tried to provoke bad feelings between husbands and wives. It was not so. He tried to make them understand what a real relationship between husband and wife should be. I do not know of a single instance of married couples separating through Gurdjieff, but I do know of many who were brought closer together through him. His ways of dealing with people were always difficult and baffling, because unusual, but when it came to an understanding of the human psyche, Gurdjieff was always right.